but I'm so glad you're all here. We, we welcome you all. Um, how many of you love the Lord Jesus? Every hand goes up. You know what? Uh, that's why we're here, okay? Because you love the Lord Jesus. So today, we're going to spend some time in worship and music, which is worship. That's what the angels in heaven do. Well, guess what? After you die, you're going to be a lot like the angels in heaven. You're going to be gathered with them, and you're going to be singing praises to God. He's going to be the center of everything. And he is the center of everything here. He's the reason we're here. He's the purpose. He gives us our lives purpose. So I am so glad that you are here today. So let's let's uh, begin uh, with prayer. And uh, I'm going to say, Autumn Masoni, Brother Autumn Masoni, Reverend Autumn Masoni, uh, back from Tennessee. Is that right? right? We missed you. I really did. So uh, I, I wasn't sure you'd come back. I was <laughs> down there with his son. You were building a mailbox. Is that what you were doing? Amen. Well, you, would you lead us in prayer today? Will you come on up here so that everybody can uh, see your handsome face, yes. You lead us in prayer. Let's pray together. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for the joy of Easter that we are still celebrating. <coughs> thank you for Jesus, for the Word of God, and the opportunity to hear the Word this morning. We pray you bless Pastor Ken as he leads in the service this morning. Pray you'll give him your message to us. Help us to receive it uh, with a whole heart. And uh, just bless the service to your glory and praise. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Reverend, Reverend Dr. Zoni, he used to be a uh, pastor of several churches around uh, here, and of course down in the south. And uh, once also a, a career military chaplain with that colonel. So he's, he's retired, but um, I keep using him because really, when people are called out, they're really not um, ever retired. And of course, that means all of us. We're, none of us are really ever retired from loving and serving the Lord. Thanks. Let's all I'm going to go to John chapter 20, where I left off. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Amen. And uh, that's where we left off last week. We just got up to verse 16. We hit 17. I, I wanted to start this week with verse 17 for a reason, because it's just such a beautiful verse, and it, it, it shows a little bit beyond um, what we think of. When you think of the resurrection, you think, oh, man, that's great. He has power over life, and so he can heal us from our, uh, uh, from our sins and wash us clean and give us good quality of life. And of course, that's what the, that's what the word says, that, that we have to uh, that he's coming to, to, to give us joy. So that's why we, I tell you, we should all be filled with joy today, be filled with joy. But there's another important part of the resurrection. See, it's not just uh, that he came back to life here. You know, that's, that's a miracle that, you know, when someone is, dies and is in the grave three days and he comes out of the grave, and just as he said he would, it's, it's great. And, 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 and um, and of course, we saw Lazarus also. Jesus had taken him out after four days. He took him out of the grave. That's all great. But Lazarus came back to live right here. And he went on. And, oh, the, the, you have to read the different traditions. And he went on to become a bishop and all that. But um, a bishop is a pastor. Really, that's all that is. Uh, but usually they were the first sounded out. They would like to be the first Baptist or the first. Uh, they weren't Baptist. They didn't call themselves Baptists. But. We call them Baptist churches because that's what we like to do. <laughs> but they're churches. And, uh, and so they, be the, they would have a lot of influence. But every pastor, that word is, is a pastor. So, so a, lot, a lot of people believe the Latin would not be a pastor. But he walked with them. But that was life. That was life. But what do we really want from Jesus? Now, when you get, when you get, you can call me, if I die and you call me back, if God called me back to life after three days or five days or, or uh, four days at, like Lazarus, um, what would that mean for me? <laughs> well, not very much because I'm an old man anyway. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I'm, I'm more concerned right now. I mean, I am concerned about my health, but I'm, I'm more concerned about my, what? Eternity. Now, that's the real promise. That's the real promise. So yeah, life is good, but I'm interested in eternal life. Now, if you're 20 years old, you're thinking about 
this life. I want to get married. I remember when I used to learn about the rapture and everything when I was just a young guy and I'm married to my this beautiful girl named Pat. And there she is back there, as a matter of fact. And, uh, and, and I remember I was used, used to be thinking, man, uh, I don't really want to get raptured out. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm living my dream now. You know, I want to raise my children. You know, and I want, and I want to have more. You know, I want to raise my children. That's what I used to think as a new Christian. You know, well, I, I, all that rapture stuff is good, but I really don't want to go with the rapture. You know, maybe when I'm an old man, that'll be a nice way to go. But not when I'm young. But the real promise that Jesus gives us is, is, is eternity. Eternity. It is fellowship with God here, right now, that gives us joy, gives us happiness, and we have that. As a matter of fact, we're already, we already have begun our eternal life. You, you know that. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you made your choice of where you're going to spend your eternity. You're going to spend your eternity in heaven with God, right? So that's what Jesus says in verse 17. He says, uh, touch me not, he's talking to Mary, Magdalene, for I am not ascended, I'm going to get under a good light here, because I can't see in the darkness, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. So what Jesus is really saying when he, when he comes to appear, before his disciples, it is, is, and he's, talking, he's giving Mary a little hint here, you know, that, 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 uh, that the real joy of the resurrection is that we have eternal fellowship with God forever and ever and ever and ever. Jesus, when he died during those three days, you know, there's, if you listen to the Apostles' Creed, you know the truth of all of that. He did a lot of miraculous things. He was concerned about the, those who, he had, he had to bring that message to hell, tell them, hey, you know, uh, risen from the dead. It was all true. And uh, but he's going to go into to heaven and he's going to also proclaim it. And heaven's going to rejoice. It has rejoiced. They're rejoicing now. There's a feast in you know, the, uh, right now. The, the marriage supper of the Lamb going on right now that you and I are going to join. That's what we need to look for. So the joy that we have is, is, is beyond just, hey, I have a few more years to live here. But the joy we have is the reality of the, of the promises of God that we have eternal life. Now, the Old Testament people didn't really understand that. It's kind of a shame that the high priest and all these people that were fighting with Jesus, I believe that they knew he was the Messiah, but they didn't want to give up the temple and all the money and the power that they had. He fulfilled scripture. It was definitely, he was him. He was doing miracles, bringing people back from the dead, taking the blind and giving them sight, taking deaf people, giving them hearing. Taking crippled people and right, raising them up when they were walking. Remember when he stopped the, 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 the uh, funeral procession of a young man and rose, the man, took the man right out of the grave and gave him back to his mother? Right in the scripture. That's the thing, and they all knew about it. And Lazarus was walking around. They want, you know, in fact, the high priest, one of the things he wanted to do was kill Jesus and kill Lazarus again. <laughs> yeah. I know Lazarus, he just won't die, you know. And he was a friend of Jesus. Well, that's the, what we have, folks. We, you know, we're, God heals us and takes care of us now. He gives us an abundant life. He gives us longer life. I was telling somebody the other day, what I read years and years ago, the average Christian, because of our lifestyle, we live 10 years longer than the average person. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes people die young. But on the, on the whole, we live 10 years longer, you know? I've been a Christian all my adult life. And uh, I just praise God every day. I got plenty of things wrong with me, you know. I do, but I but I go I'll I'll go up jog and you know, hit three miles, two three miles. And I don't have any trouble doing that. And I'm 73. Okay, that's just God has been good to me. But He can take that away tomorrow. He, if that's He took that away from me tomorrow, and I die, I lose nothing. You, you realize that's what He's saying. You lose nothing. I'm giving you all the light, but but that's not what, it, what, the, what the promise is. The, the gift is eternity. And so Mary Magdalene came and, and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken of these things unto her. Now, you know, Mary Magdalene, Jesus had cast seven devils out of her. How would you like to have that? You know? And, we, and that's, that could be disease. It could be a habit. 
could be a habit that, 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 that she has. Uh, but, the, but there are actually spirits that are called fallen angels. That actually, to an unsaved person, they can come and live inside of you if you're not saved. Now they can't, I don't believe, there's, there's some controversy over this, but I don't believe that you can, that you can, um, you and I can be possessed by a devil if you know Jesus Christ as you would save you because you already have the Holy Spirit in you. Now that's what we're going to talk about here today. The Holy Spirit. The third person of the Trinity. The, whole, the third person of the Trinity. Uh, he, he uh, in John uh, chapter 15, 16, 17, Jesus Christ it helps, helps people know uh, better who the third person is. In the Old Testament, they, they was, it was very shadowy. They really didn't believe in a, a third person. And to this day, uh, Orthodox Jews, etc., only believe that in the Father. Okay? They don't believe in the Son or the Holy Spirit. But Jesus Christ is the Son, and he proves that. And then he, he also introduces us to another comforter, Allos, another comforter, exactly the same as himself. He said, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send you another one exactly the same as myself. And, he's, and, and the Holy Spirit will always point to Jesus. He, he is your guide, your conscience, okay? He's all, he lives within you. He actually, you actually have God in you. Think about that the next time you think about committing a, a serious sin. You know? A kind of sin. Think about that. You are the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives within you. Well, that's a heavy, isn't it? So we have to live as though we are citizens of heaven and people who have uh, such a close fellowship that God dwells in us. So you can't be, I don't believe you can be possessed by a demon. You can be influenced by a demon. Okay? You can still get habits, etc., cetera, et cetera. You can give it, you, you, can, you, can weaken, you can weaken yourself. But, but you don't have to. In fact, it's impossible to live like a Christian until you are a Christian and now we have no excuse, because now we have the Holy Spirit living within us, and we have the ability to actually live perfect lives. Have you ever lived a perfect life? No hands. <laughs> when I ask you, how many of you love Jesus? Every hand went up, but how many of you live a perfect life? No hands. But you know, it's actually possible. I've done it for about 10 minutes. <laughs> then I fail again, you know. But praise God, we have the grace of God who loves us, and who forgives us and washes away all those sins. And so God the Father looks down upon us. He sees saints who, are, who, are, who have the Holy Spirit living within them. And so Jesus Christ appears and, and, and Mary Magdalene came and, and told the disciples that she had seen the, the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening time, being the first day of the week, and we talked about that last week, the, 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 the Christian Sabbath is <clears throat> Sunday. Why? Because that's the day that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The Jewish Sabbath is, is Saturday. That's the day of rest. Isn't that great? For, when I was a kid, people used to take Saturday generally as a day of rest, and Sunday they went to church. And today, I don't know, it seems like both days are being neglected, aren't they? But it is, it is the day that Christ rose from the dead. That's why we assemble together. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of, of yourselves together to come together and exhort and encourage one another. So we need that encouragement. We need that, that lifting up. When, when you come in, this place is empty, but when you come in, the Holy Spirit is so full in here. So full in here. It's just, it's just uh, amazing. Amazing. I wear contact lenses, and I feel the Holy Spirit in here so strongly sometimes that I cannot even see my text because my, teeth, my, my, my eyes are watering so much, so much in this room. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is in this room when you, when you come in. And when you go out, you bring the Holy Spirit into your homes or wherever you go. But at this time, they didn't have that. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit empowered people for a time, but then left them, you know? A good example of that would be, remember uh, King Saul? And uh, he went insane, didn't he? Because he got away from God, and he was so unhappy, and he used, to, he used to have David as a child come and sing to him. He didn't, he didn't you remember, his, his little shepherd boy from out of the house would come, and was so filled with the Spirit. And that would, that would calm his spirit, because he, his Holy, the Holy Spirit wasn't there. And uh, so the same day, at evening, being the, the first day of the week, that the people that gathered, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, 
But fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them. Now, let me tell you something. It hasn't changed. The world still does not accept who we are. The world has a different understanding of almost everything that we do. Okay? And so the world rejects us and even hates us. You go into, uh, into a, 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 some, some worldly uh, uh, place and you say something nice about, I love Jesus and Jesus loves me, and they're all going to shun you. <laughs> they may even bodily throw you out. Even today, it will be like that. Jesus Christ was rejected and put on a cross. You know, John the Baptist was rejected and deep beheaded. All the apostles, except for John and Judas, of course, died martyr's death. Because the world rejects those who truly follow. I, I always, they, they always say that if there was just one person in the world that really gave himself completely to Jesus Christ, he could turn the world upside down. But the world, the, the world has probably killed them. When someone comes like comes along like that, they get rejected and, and murdered. <laughs> really, that's what happens. Uh, I don't want to go into that, but you know that thousands and thousands and thousands of believers are killed every year. It's been really bad the last few years, especially in the Middle East. Uh, what, what's been happening? So they reject us. So he says the world. The, the first day of the week, they come to for encouragement. Okay, so they, and Jesus stood in the midst. And said unto them, Peace be unto you. <clears throat> That's what he came. He came to bring us peace. Now, again, I'm going to tell you that, that I found Christ uh, kind, of, kind of as a young man. And I remember sitting and listening to a service where the man was preaching about peace. Now, I was a young Marine at the time. And, I, and, I, and I'm trying to, and I'm fighting over, should I be a young Marine? <laughs> should I go, should, should I be willing to fight? Or, or, or not? Should, should I be, you know, should I be willing to kill? And I, I have to tell you the truth. I have no desire. I never have a desire. I have had a desire to kill anybody. I just, I just don't. I mean, I'm angry, but I never, as a person, I that's something I never want to do is ever kill any human being. I just, I just, and so I, I was saying, should I be like a Mennonite? You know, give up all military and just not fight. You know. And I heard a guy preach, and, and he explained what Jesus Christ meant when he said, Peace be unto you. He was talking about what he was talking about in verse 17. That because of the cross of Jesus Christ, you and I have the ability to have perfect peace with God. <clears throat> when you disobey God, you, are, you, you, you pull yourself away from God. God puts an, uh, around the believer, he puts a, 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 an umbrella of protection. And then when you... When, when you disobey God, you come out from under that umbrella of protection and all the fiery dots of Satan hit us, you know, and, and drive us down and, and bring us into discouragement and into sickness and ill health. But when you stay under the, under the umbrella of Jesus Christ, uh, you, you know that God has you in his hand and no man can take you from him. That's what the scripture says. Nobody can take you from him because God the Father has you in his hand and no man can take you from God the Father's hand. That's what it says in John chapter 10. So peace means perfect peace with God. That's why I said when we started the service, that when God looks down upon all of you, he doesn't see any sinners. Now I think about it. When I look at, at myself, when I look in the mirror, I see a rotten sinner. You know, I do. And I know that I deserve to go to hell forever. But I also know when God looks down upon me, he sees a forgiven man. Because I gave my life to Jesus. Because I, I, gave, I gave my will to Jesus. I, I made the decision. I, I chose that I want to follow Jesus and not uh, follow the world. So I'm forgiven. And all of you, I think, unless, you, unless someone here that hasn't accepted Christ, you can, you can accept him today. You have perfect peace with God right now. If you were to die today, are you going to go to purgatory? That's what I was taught when I was a kid. I don't care, isn't it? But that was an invented thing. Actually, the scripture says, to be absent from the body is to be present with God. Right? Isn't that what Paul said? Yeah. That's exactly right. You, you, you're either going to go to heaven, or you're going to go to hell. As the, as the scripture says, as the tree falls, there it lay. Okay? 
So if you have perfect peace with God, that was your sins are forgiven, you have, and, 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 and God, you, you accepted Jesus Christ to save you, you're going to heaven. So you, have, you should be filled with joy. Say, oh, but I got all these bills. Yeah. <laughs> they bring you down, don't they? And I got all these diseases. Don't you just love going to a doctor nowadays and they give you a list of everything that's, that's ever been wrong with you for the last 20 years? You know, and you say, man, can I cross a couple of these off? They don't have that anymore, you know. I'm always trying to, I'm always trying to get it off the paper like it's gonna, that's going to make it better if I get it off the paper, you know. But there it is, you know. Well, that would get you down. Well, we don't need to be, ever be down. You know, there are going to be people who reject you. You're going to be, uh, you're, you're, there's going to be people who, who just, just, it's going to break your heart. You know, uh, there's all kinds of, uh, there's going to be diseases that come. There's going to be all kinds of things that break, that break you down. But don't let that happen. We have perfect peace with Christ. We are going to be with God forever and ever. So he comes into the room, he says, peace to you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. And then were his disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Now, they, had, they, they, didn't, they, didn't, they, they didn't understand when Christ was put on the cross, they scattered. Why? Because they didn't have the Holy Spirit living within them. Okay? And now Jesus Christ comes into their, their, their midst and he's, he feels the need to show them his side and to show them his hands. You guys how, how, how broken they were with these great big spikes. You know, in, in right through the, probably right through the wrist, you know. How terrible that was to look at. But that was to show them, yes, I am here. It's really me. I'm here in the flesh. Yes, I really was on the cross. That wasn't somebody else. It's me. I have risen from the dead. And they are all ecstatic. Then said Jesus unto them. Now this is a great gift. He says, uh, peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send to you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Gift, Ghost. Now this was a temporary anointing for these people. At Pentecost, after 50 days, this is one week, this is seven days. They're going to receive an anointing of the Holy Spirit that is permanent. That, uh, that, that, and we'll talk about that. I want to wait 50 days to get into Pentecost. That's one of my favorite sermons. But you know what happens, you know? That they, they, they receive the Holy Spirit and they, 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 uh, the tongues of fire uh, stand over them, you know? And, and you can see it, you know? And, and they're so excited that they, they go outside and begin to preach to the community, to the, to the Jewish uh, festivities. They're all the people that were there from all over the world. They're out there and they're speaking and they're, they're speaking in tongues and they're just turning uh, the world upside down. And so uh, that's, when they, that's, that's when they really, really received the Holy Spirit. Now when did you receive the Holy Spirit? When did God overshadow you and make it so that you had an anointing that was for not just the rest of your life, that's what Jesus is trying to teach you. Yeah? But this is for an eternity. You will have God's presence and peace forever in your life. When will that actually happen? Yes. When did it happen? Yes. It already happened. What? When you accepted Christ. When you accepted Christ. I was, I was going to have Pentecostals say, oh, you know, when you, when you spoke in tongues, that's when, you, that's when you received the Holy Spirit, you know. That's not what the Scripture is teaching. The Scripture is teaching is the day you turn your life over to God. The day you said, Dear Jesus, I know that you are the Son of God. And, 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 and I, I, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I turn away from my sins. And I receive you as my Savior and the Lord of my life. That was, I'm going to live for you. That's the day when the Holy Spirit just descended on you and made of you a brand new person. Yes, you are. You're a brand new person. You're not the same person you were before. You're a brand new person. You have a whole new conscience. Why is it when someone gets saved, what do you care about that? When someone comes forward here and says, I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, Lord. Why is it everybody goes, whoa, yay, and everybody leaves this place excited. Someone accepted Christ as their Savior. Where did that come from? Why should you care about what happened to that person? <coughs> it's the Holy Spirit. 
Why do you, why are you concerned that the people around you know Jesus Christ is going to save you? Why is it that when you had a child, the greatest dream of, for you to, is, I hope one day that I see that person, that my child, receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. You know? That's what we do when we dedicate a child. We say, okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to raise this child to know their father in heaven, and then when they get baptized, that's like mother's, uh, mother and father's uh, uh, coronation. You know, it's, 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 it's like, it's, it's so wonderful to see your child. I, I promised God that I'd raise, to, I'd raise my child to know God, and now they have, of their own free will, come forward to, uh, to, to, to tell the world that they belong to Jesus Christ and they want to be baptized. That's a wonderful thing. That's the, that's the completion of the dedication. You'll say, well, you did, well do, do you, uh, do, do you, uh, uh, the dedication, do you sprinkle with water? No. We do that when they get baptized. Okay? It takes a lot, they have to make their own decision. But then they have the Holy Spirit living in them then. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And so uh, that's what, that, that's what they're gonna, it's going to happen in 50 days. So he said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Now, does that mean I can go around saying, You, your sins are forgiven. Forgiven. You, your sins are forgiven. This is given to all the believers. Everybody that's received the Holy Spirit. Is that what that's saying? Because the scripture says that we have the keys to heaven and hell. That's what it says. That's the gift that we have as, as believers. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means like if I if I come to somebody and I tell them about who Jesus Christ is, that he is the very Son of God, that he died for you on the cross, and that he rose again to, to, to prove that he has power over life and death. And, and if you will re, if you will turn your life over to him, you will have your sins forgiven. And someone says with all sincerity, they look in their eyes and they say, uh, you know, they, they pray the sinner's prayer and they, they say, okay, I've received Jesus Christ as my Savior, my Lord. I can say, yeah, well, yeah just what, I, what did I just say when I came in here? That nobody here has any sins, right? It's all washed away. You thought, oh, you thought, boy, well, that, that pastor, where's he getting that from? From the lips of Jesus. That's where I got it. I can say to somebody who received Jesus Christ and means it, when they say, I, I believe, I can say your sins are forgiven. On the other hand, when someone comes in and says, I hate Jesus, I don't believe in Jesus, and I won't follow Jesus, I'm my own man. He who dies with the most toys wins. And as they say, <laughs> bumper stickers, you know? I can say to that person, you know you're going to hell, don't you? I can say that. They say, well, how do you know? There he is. The word of God. I can say that. Because I know, you've all heard this before, that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know. <laughs> right? right? Who said that? Pat Kelly, right? Pat Kelly. That was around the time he broke my pulpit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know the old baseball home run hitter? He hit my pulpit and broke it. They go, oh, Pastor, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, go right on, man. Come on. It's good. <laughs> All good. I know that I know. Because the word of God. <coughs> I'm vaccinated. You don't have to worry about me, God. Okay. <laughs> but God is, tells us in his word that you are forgiven. Or you are going to hell if you don't know him. There's only two kinds of people in this world. Those who are believers and those who are going to hell. And they're lost because they don't believe. My friends, that's a, that's a real heavy, isn't it? Jesus came there and told his disciples that. And Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, <coughs> was not with them. And later on, <laughs> Jesus Christ came back. And uh, it says, uh, Then the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the, the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his, in his hand the prince of the nails, and put in my fingers in the prince of the, 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 and put in, in my finger in the prince of, of his nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Well, isn't that what Jesus told the others? Really, that's what it took all of them. Only because 
Thomas wasn't where he was supposed to be. He wasn't in Sunday school. He wasn't in church. I don't know. He didn't get the message. And so he says this, that it didn't make him any less, but it just meant that he had lost eight days of joy. And so Jesus Christ appeared again, said the same thing, peace unto you. And Thomas, and Thomas looked at him and, 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 said, and, and then he looked at him. Remember, Jesus Christ knows everything. He's omniscient. He knows, even though he, he wasn't physically present, he knew what Thomas said. He knows our sins. He knows everything that we do. He even knows our thoughts. And he looks at Thomas and he said, Thomas, you know, here it is. Brush your fingers into my side. <laughs> you know? And Thomas made one of the most wonderful statements. He said, my Lord and my God. I remember when the Jehovah Witnesses were trying to make me into a Jehovah Witness, you know. And I saw that in the scripture, you know. My Lord and what? My God. My God. Next time, next time a Jehovah Witness comes up to you and says, you know, that Jesus Christ is not God, he's just a God, a created God. You say, oh, tell him what Thomas said when he stood in front of him. Oh, oh, Jehovah Witness, because of your lack of faith, you are headed to hell. And I, it's a shame. Come to Jesus. You, don't, you want to stick your fingers in the side? No. Jesus said, how much more precious are those who didn't see me, but they believe. My friends, the Holy Spirit enlightened your heart. He opened your heart. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you said, yes, I will receive Christ, I will, I will serve you for the rest of my life, the only way you could ever have said that is if the Holy Spirit opened your heart. That was your anointing. And that was the beginning of your new life in Christ. And that was the beginning for Thomas. I one time was preaching a sermon in India and a church just built by, by Americans. We had a great procession through the town. The, uh, the Hindu priest had followed behind us. He wasn't happy. And we filled that church up. I remember preaching and there was people, there were people walking by with, with water buckets on the top of their head, you know. The whole audience sat on the floor. And it was right close to where Thomas had been killed. And I told the people that this is close to where Thomas was murdered for his faith. He founded seven churches in India. He went on, they say, he went all the way to, to China with the message of Christ. Oh, Thomas. <laughs> it says, oh, because of his lack of faith. Because of his lack of faith, he had eight days without joy. But for us, we can have joy every day for the rest of our lives and into eternity because we believe with full faith that Jesus is the Son of God, the risen Savior. Father in heaven, I thank you and praise you for every person here. I thank you for the life of Thomas, who, Lord, uh, came to Jesus on that day when Jesus loved him so much that he came just to tell him, Thomas, put your fingers in my side. Lord, we don't have to put our fingers in your side. We believe. Your Holy Spirit has touched us, possessed us, lives in us. Help us, Lord, to be worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The altar is open. Perhaps if somebody here would like to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Someone would like to rededicate their life. Whatever you need, we invite you to come as you say. You say, well, I'll do that next week. Well, next week may never come. Okay? You may never, you never, you may never see next week. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't be like Thomas and lose all that joy. That You don't want eight days of, uh, of waiting. You come and receive Jesus Christ today. Whatever you need, we invite you to come. Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are those that have not seen me and have believed. That's you if you receive Christ. But that's a little quick. Spiritually, we do see Jesus. Spiritually, we do feel him is present in our presence. But these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Now that's not talking just this life. Remember, when you leave this place, I want you to remember it's eternal life, eternal fellowship with God. That's our joy. Let's Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. You have, uh, we've listened to your exhortations from the Word of God. We've listened to the encouragement given by each other. 
Now, Lord, be with us all week. Uh, ena enable us, Lord, to be victorious through every uh, problem and every care. And give us joy every day of this week. Lord, help us to find someone this week to tell them about the love of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.